Greetings, today I'm FGOS RS. I am installing the official Ford parts made by ACV Wireless Charging Pocket. Alright, this is it then, and this is what you get in the box. You get the actual unit itself, which is of course a complete replacement for that little cubby hole area that has the USB port. As you can see, we do retain the USB port. And then you have this new area in which to place a phone and charge it wirelessly, a little LED indicator, and then a cable to power it. Very, very simple. It's going to essentially splice off one of the connections for power that's already in there. So yes, that is it. Very, very simple. Um, we just need to dismantle the dash, get out the old part, slot the new part in, and then it will look absolutely OEM. And that, of course, is the whole point. It is an actual Ford part. Ford officially get these supplied by a company called ACV, if you can see there. Um, yeah, so once it's installed, it's going to look absolutely stock and factory, but we're going to have this awesome added, really handy functionality. In terms of where I got it, you can get it directly from Ford parts, or um, you can do like I did. I got it from Rates Ford. Um, they provide a very, very good service. I've got a whole bunch of stuff from Rates Ford. I highly recommend them. So without further ado, let's jump into the car and start the installation. All right then, in the car, as you can see, this of course is the space that we are going to be replacing this whole little area, this whole little unit. And then we're gonna obviously have less space for storing random stuff, but we're still gonna have some. And of course, we're gonna have the charger, our phone will just slot in here. So in order to get this out, this is attached um, to this wider center console unit. Um, so we do need to dismantle a few things in order to get in around the back, disconnect, and then we'll get that out. So first things first, First, we need to remove some of this trim. This first bit of trim that goes like right around the edge ends up over here. Um, there are clips all the way around it, so I'm gonna start on this top right edge. Just gonna use plastic trim tools, no metal trim tools because we don't want to damage our plastics. So we should just be able to wiggle this in. If you have a couple of different tools, it can be handy. Over this side, you can see that we popped this bit here. If we open up the glove box, what we can actually do is we can actually sort of pull this out entirely and then that just makes seeing in here a little bit easier. You can see where that bit clicked in there and also into up there as well. Just gets out of the way whilst we're taking this off. Other things to note with the clips, um, there are two like little it's almost like dial pins here and here. They sort of go straight in. They don't really clip or anything, but they do go straight in. So they want to come straight out this way. We've got these like plasticky clips um, around here. So we should be able to like unclip those. But like I say, with these ones down here, whenever we're prying upwards, we kind of want to be pushing it that way as well. Because um, if I flip it around here, you can see those two little pins right there. They go into little square holes here. So you don't want to be lifting straight up. Otherwise, you could snap them right off. Um, but anyway, that's the first part done. All right, then next thing is this piece of plastic under here. So there are clips along the top, sm fairly small ones that we clip out first. We get our trim tool in between here. Then we clip that down to get those clips off. And then there's some larger ones that are sort of going straight in. So once we have a gap here, then we need to get a, our trim tool in there and ping it towards ourselves. So I'm going in with this almost hooky type one, getting it in the gap and pinging it towards myself. Let's see. 
there we go so that's that bit off now that that's out hopefully you can see what i mean those little clips at the top are fairly easy but then these in particular these two large ones are a wee bit tricky you need to give it a reasonable yank um but don't worry it won't sound pretty but you know that's how you gotta do it so anyway that is that out removing that piece of plastic reveals the two screws that are under here that we need to remove which are here and then another one on that side and then we do have another screw that we revealed initially down here and these are all t25 torques so we'll remove those now At this point then I might as well take the shifter off so I'm obviously running the aftermarket so I've got a couple of extra steps to do but essentially it's the same thing as stock which is just get a good grip and screw it anti-clockwise and it will come off. I obviously have an extra step now I have to take this like adapter off but that's pretty much it. Now we can get this whole bit removed so the first stage of that is to click it out of its little clips now we want to sort of pry it up and then outwards so starting down here at the front of it get a grip you see it's coming up and then just work our way along oh yeah so that's one side let's give it a wiggle and you can see we are now fully loosened so at this point we can't just yank it away because there are several electrical connections we have electrical connections for the 12 volt the buttons here and then we have our usb we've got then i think i believe there's three different plugs around the back here um, now these are kind of hard to show you um, certainly the ones around here uh, but essentially they're mostly the same uh, there's two large ones just right behind here and here um, they're two different colors uh, just plastic tabs push a little plastic tab and wiggle them out they'll come out um though there's a smaller one that's sort of behind around sort of here similarly these there's basically always a plastic tab that you have to manipulate and then they should just wiggle out i mean it is like i said it is kind of hard to show you but i'll try you can see there's that there's the blue one anyway so i mean this is kind of the thing you need two hands for uh, but you can hopefully see little plastic tab there so i'm just going to push that and then wiggle it out that one there is the one that i was talking about S slightly different shape the wee plastic tab is just right at the back there so you just got to push that down and then that will loosen and then it just pings right off and then we do need to get our usb out of its little socket now that i've got that out you can see right on top there's like a little tooth and that little tooth just clicks into that little square bit at the top so if you kind of push it downwards then out it should come out it is a bit tight but of course it's meant to be a bit tight so that it stays in there obviously okay switching seats then i can get at this electrical connection which is for our buttons so very simple another little plastic tab we just push that in and then that should come out yep very simple so lifting this up and around you can see our 12 volt that sort of triangular looking gray bit is what we need to push down because you can see the little tooth that's in here holding it into the yellow housingy bit there we go so given that a swift yank we can then remove this entire assembly you can see we have our shifter in there all those electrical connections you could probably do this with like leaving this kind of in and just loose and just work around the back uh, but it's probably easier at this point now um, to just entirely remove it because then we do have some clips and some more screws in around the back there that we do need to remove and also just it's easier for me to show you it with it out of the car so i'm going to bounce into the garage and do this and get that switched over okay in the garage i've got it like upside down um just to show you more t25 torque screws so there's one here and then one around here on the other side so let's remove those now
All right, then now we have some plastic clips. So we've got three on the bottom there. And then maybe a little harder to show you is there are two that are like in there. So I'm gonna attack those two that are sort of more difficult to access first. What I'm gonna use is just this little tiny extension and a little tiny flat. So I'm just gonna like, you know, pry the clips up and then that should release the top and then it should be fairly easy, obviously, to get one, two and three because we can actually access them just with our fingers. There we go. So I thought that these front ones were going to be more awkward than the rears, but actually these ones were kind of a bit more awkward because if you can see here, they have to go through those three slots and then there are three like little clip things that go through the holes of each of these. So now you have those two released, you're kind of at a slight angle like this, which is slightly bending these back, but obviously they need to come up and over and then straight out so it's a little bit fiddly and um, just take your time i would say don't force it because of course you're playing with plastic and you do not want to damage your plastics um so yes that is it out we will need to pop our little antenna off of this here uh, but it's just being held on by a couple of plastics so literally just pushing the plastic sidey bits away either side um because obviously we want to keep our antenna. Um, so put that there, get our new part. We can see we have a holder on top, of course. So we've got our antenna. It can only really go in one way because especially this hole lines up with this prong right here. So we just want to line that up and then get it pushed in. I'm gonna just use some pliers just to help me out a bit. There we go. Very nice, perfect OEM fit for our antenna, which is perfect, of course. So now we can get this in here. So what we'll do is we'll aim for these three first. So line them up, slide them through. We should get them to click in. So now we want to sort of pull this towards us until those two little ones around here can be pushed downwards so that they go into their slot. and then push down to click into place. So whenever they're located, then we can get our little T25 torque screws back in. Lovely. Now we flip it round, as you can see. We are now installed, looking very OEM as expected. Happy days, so now we can move this back out to the car. Okay, back in the car then, we have our wiring harness first before we get the actual center console back together. We're gonna to be using the 12 volt supply, this gray connector, and that's gonna connect into this female connector here. Then we'll have a replacement connector for the actual 12 volt here. And then we have the little one, which is going to power our new wireless charger. So it can only really go in one way. Might be a bit stiff, so we need to push the little tab down. Oh, there we go. Once you get it in, it will click. It's like I say, it's pretty tight, uh, but that's a good thing. And uh, that means that it is nice and securely in there. So at this point, we do have this whole like bit of wire here. Um, so we don't obviously want to just have it dangling, um, but we do then need this part to be kind of around, maybe around here approximately. Uh, but we then need this part um, to be around here approximately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to root the wire in behind here so the most direct place to root this i think is going to be underneath just directly behind so yeah you can reach through and just pull that through here so yeah with that under there i mean that kind of naturally pulls the gray the original gray connector like downward anyway which sort of leaves our new connector for our 12 volt in the exact right place but we do have a lot of slack uh, for this. So what I think we should do is I think we should fold it up again a bit and then use a cable tie to 
you know, we don't really need any more than that right there, you know, so. All right, cool. So down in there, you can see our original 12 volt connected to the harness. We have our new 12 volt here where it needs to be. Then rooted in around the back, we have the slack of our new wiring harness and this little one, the power connector for our wireless charger. So everything is now ready in place and we can now get our center console back together. All right, well, the first thing to do with this, I would say is probably our shifter area. So it has a little notch in the plastic bit underneath, which lines up with a bit of metal right here. So you just want to take that down straight all over that. And it should pop down like that. You need to get it all the way down so that you can see all of the threads there. Um, so that's that in place and it should be free moving once you do so. Um, so now we can start connecting up our electrical connections. So we've got our 12 volt. All right, so flipping it around, you can see it's around this side where we have to connect our little wiring harness jobby here. There is a little plastic tab on one side and that has to be lining up with a little tab right here. So we'll just do that now. And then it's pretty much just uh, reconnecting everything as it was before. So there we go, I've got it connected in there and you'll be able to see as soon as I connected it in there we got our red light come on which is awesome. The red light is our standby light so we're getting power and that is great. Um, so yes, now just going to connect everything back in exactly the way that we removed it. It's just pushing it in, clicking it in, making sure everything is in line and then we can get this clicked back into place and that will be it done. All right, then we have all of our electrical connections made. Everything is good, so we are ready to click this back into place. So we did come out and up, so we're gonna go down and in, obviously, making sure that these plastic tabs are like obviously under this so that they line up with these white things around the back. That's where the screws go into. And yeah, just pushing it in, making sure everything clicks into place, making sure that our wiring looms are not overlapping with our connections, which they currently are not, but just make sure of that because you don't want to damage your wires. And yeah, pretty simple, just click it back into place. There we go. You will hear some nice reassuring clicks, especially with those metal clips. So yeah, now we're ready to get our three screws back into place. Okay, now we can get our sort of decorative plastics back in. So we'll start with this bit for under here. Um, so we're gonna locate these big ones and then click in the little ones at the top. There we go, up and in, lovely. I mean, it's really just case of lining everything up. Um, if you remember, we want to line up our little like pin things that go straight in at the bottom here. So it really is a case of going kind of down and in at the same time. Okay, and then of course we can't forget about our little bit that goes in at the side of our glove box. So, so now we can do our shifter. So our little springy thing goes on top. And then at this point most shifters just screw on, but I of course have my adapter set. So I have to go this part. There we go. So that is installation complete. So all that's really left to do now is to test it out. I have my phone here. It's a Galaxy S8. Um, so yeah, put it in. 
and it immediately starts charging. Goes blue, get a wee noise. Awesome, you can see it, you can probably maybe see it in there, just the phone did light up, so yeah, that's awesome. And because of course it's connected into the bottom of the 12 volt, we don't actually have to have the car running, it's just gonna be available all the time to charge our phones. Um, so yeah, and I mean, there's plenty of space in there. I mean, I can get like, like more than my finger in at that side, and there's space above as well. And it is a little like rubberized mat, so it's not gonna like jangle around if we are driving. Um, but yeah, plenty of space. So even bigger phones than a Galaxy S8. Um, that's a Galaxy S8 with a reasonably chunky cover on as well. So if you've got a bigger phone, it should hopefully fit as well. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. Installation complete, everything working, happy days. So there we go then, that is the installation finished of our new charging pocket from Ford Parts from Rates Ford, made by ACV, and the look is absolutely excellent, OEM look, it looks like it's meant to be there, which of course I guess it kind of is, and it relocates the USB port down a bit, so you're not you're not losing out on the space there, um, so yeah, it just fits real nice, it works perfectly as you can see, and I'm very very happy with it, and I hope you like it too, and I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, please do like, share, and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.